about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King came out against the Vietnam War aggressively. And that's when a lot of backers of the, uh, of, of the black movement, uh, of the civil rights movement, really pulled away from him. They felt that he, he shouldn't have done that. Well, to me, that was the greatest thing that Martin Luther King was doing. He was really talking about the civil rights, not only of the black Americans, but the Southeast and Asians who were being oppressed by the, uh, and murdered and killed by the Vietnam War. And so, uh, but it's interesting that they don't talk about that with Martin Luther King. They only talk about the interest of the civil rights movement in this country and not the civil rights movement that, that he felt was important in Southeast Asia. Now, with respect to the Republican convention, I think you're gonna see the same old hoopla that you saw in this convention. Uh, you know, everything they did was right. Uh, you're, gonna see, you're gonna see more militarism. Uh, they're gonna play more of the military card, the commander in chief. And this plays into uh, the, the, American, the militarized culture that's been foisted on the American people. And this is the tragedy. Here we have the superpower of the world. And I don't mean just military superpower. We are the economic superpower. We're going to be losing that over time. But uh, right now, we are, we are the dangerous country in the world. We truly are. And, uh, and I don't know of any way to change that other than to empower the people to be able to become lawmakers. You'll never, you'll never see representative government correct itself from the inside. It's going to come from the outside. And I know this is, this is, these are not words that are attractive to your, your audience uh, at the other end, but uh, let me just tell you, I don't see all that much difference in other countries. Look at the EU. Here, they're being made fools of by the Americans. Why do the Americans support NATO? So we can manipulate the U European community. It's an American who heads up NATO. It, 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 so, and now we have NATO in Afghanistan, and uh, most of the troops in Afghanistan are, are not under NATO command. They're under American command. In addition, an American commands the other troops. I mean, we, we've got a real messed up situation, and there's no need for NATO. Who, who is Europe going to attack? And who is going to attack Europe? I mean, Russia is selling their natural gas and oil uh, to the European community. Why would, why would Russia want to do anything in any kind of belligerency with, with the Europe? The same thing with Iran. I, I'm asked frequently, you know, what we could do, and I make this statement. We could cut the price of gasoline in half at the pump right now in the United States of America. All we'd have to do is to turn around and stop sanctioning Iran and, and joining them in helping increase their productivity in natural gas and in oil, and immediately you would cut the cost of gasoline at the American pump, and which is damaging Americans and hurting their cost of living. That's what we could do. In fact, all you've got to do is watch the, the fact of every time we talk about war in Iraq, Afghanistan, or threats to Iran, you'll watch the price of gasoline go up at the pump. And who gets punished but the average American citizen who can't put two and two together as to what's going on in this regard? It's, it's really Mike Gravel, sometimes very discouraging. Mike Gravel, former U.S. Senator, thank you very much for joining our uh, special coverage of the Democratic National Convention. Barack Obama speaking 45 years after Martin Luther King Jr. spoke uh, about his dream. Some might say a younger uh, Barack Obama might uh, have quoted another civil rights, assassinated civil rights leader, Malcolm X. Well, we'll have to wait and see what, uh, what he comes up with next. We'll return you to normal programming.